You know, when I was a kid, I loved to read. I would stay up late at night with a flashlight just reading under the covers. I would encounter new ideas, new adventures, new worlds, new words. And since this is designed for a small group, why don't we turn this into a discussion question that helps break the ice, get some conversation going. This is a, this is a softball question. So here we go. Discuss amongst yourselves. When you were a kid, what did you love to do? Was it something like reading books or comics or Beckett Baseball or Beckett Hockey Magazine? Was it video games? Was it playing sports? Was it playing with dolls? That sort of thing. For me, it was reading. I loved reading. I read everything I could get my hands on. I traveled under the sea with Jules Verne. I went on action adventures with Clive Cussler. I learned new words. And the thing is, learning new words actually caused me a little embarrassment because I learned some words before I had ever heard them spoken by someone else and I struggled to pronounce them, to talk about them with other people. Words like, uh, like epitome, which is actually pronounced epitome, or like epiphany, which is actually pronounced epiphany. Over time, I started to get cautious with new words because I didn't want to look silly or dumb. I started waiting to use words until I heard from other people. Now, what does this have to do with the Holy Spirit? Well, when it comes to talking about the Holy Spirit, we almost have the same problem that I had with words as a kid. Even though you've, you've probably heard about the Holy Spirit, maybe in, uh, in church or in pop culture, maybe in a movie with a priest saying something in Latin, you know, like, uh, in nomine patris, e filii spiritus sancti, amen or something like that, or maybe in some other place. Maybe even though you've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit in some way that's hard to put into words, it can still feel harder to talk about the Holy Spirit. We don't want to seem ignorant, so we stay silent, or we avoid talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was a kid, I mixed up the word mistake, and I pronounced it Miss Snake. And there's a whole bunch of interesting reasons for it, but that doesn't matter. What matters is this. I stopped using the word mistake. I just find another way to get there. And sometimes that's exactly what happens. We just don't want to look dumb or get it wrong. And just like my Miss Snake problem, there are legitimate reasons for the misunderstanding. I mean, some of the difficulty when talking about the Holy Spirit is in his name, the Holy Spirit. What is a spirit? How is it holy? And how is the Holy Spirit God? Some of the difficulty comes from how we talk about God. See, we understand God the Father and God the Son partly because we know fathers and sons. Also, partly because we know what God the Father does and what Jesus does. I mean, think about Jesus. He did miracles, he taught, he died for our sins, he rose again, he commissioned the church. The church is called the body of Christ. Think about God the Father. He's the Father, the maker of heaven and earth. He rules over everything. But to echo the previous question, what is a Holy Spirit and what does the Holy Spirit do? Over the course of this series, in the sermon series on the Holy Spirit at work on Sundays. In the course of this study, we're gonna look at the Holy Spirit. We're gonna take away some of that confusion, some of that fear of looking a little silly and help you experience a little bit more of the fullness of all that God has in store for you if you follow Jesus. Now, just as we get started, it's worth pointing out that in all likelihood, you've probably had some encounter with the Holy Spirit. But before we get to that, let's have another discussion question. Here we go. How did your life go from one 
where you weren't following Jesus to one where you're in a small group with these people. Describe what happened to you in this process. Welcome back. Now I can imagine what someone might be thinking. What does following Jesus have to do with the Holy Spirit? One theologian said it really well when he said, the Holy Spirit is God at work. And this is the amazing thing about that. If you follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit has been involved in your life. If you have been healed, the Holy Spirit has been involved in your life. If you have started to have questions about God that you didn't have before, the Holy Spirit has been involved in your life. Basically, every story that you have about coming to the place you are now, how God has moved in your life, has been because of the work of the Holy Spirit. You're very familiar with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. In John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit, says, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. If you found yourself being drawn to Jesus in some way, you have experienced the work of the Spirit guiding you to truth, to Jesus. At the same event, but a couple chapters and verses earlier, Jesus said this in John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. All this time, you thought it was the teachers and preachers who were teaching you, but it was actually the Holy Spirit working in, through, alongside, and beyond us to teach you what you need. Over the course of this small group, we're going to explore who the Holy Spirit is, what God has available for us, and what it is that the Holy Spirit does. But now, we have another discussion question. Here we go. Discussion question number three. What is one of the more chaotic stories or experiences you have lived through? Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 2 is pretty helpful for understanding what the Holy Spirit does. The first verse introduces God. God is creator of heaven and God as creator of earth. These are some really important themes in the Bible and that's why they're introduced right up front. What comes next is pretty important. On the screen in a moment, you'll see Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. See what jumps out to you. Here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now there's, there's a lot in there that can stand out, but what stands out to me right now is that in the second verse of the Bible, 39 biblical books before we hear the name of Jesus, we're introduced to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God. And we're introduced to the Holy Spirit in a chaotic environment. Formless, barren earth, darkness, depths, waters. And from there, we move on to the famous part where it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was dark, deadly, and difficult. Everything was chaotic. But the Spirit of God was there, and God created. Now, this introduces one of the great themes in Scripture. When you are in chaos, when everything is dark, deadly, and difficult, God's Spirit is present. God's Spirit is powerful. God's Spirit creates. And God's Spirit works for life and order. The Holy Spirit is creative. Now, one of my favorite ways of understanding creativity is not to restrict it simply to imagination. Although imagination is an important part of creativity. Creativity involves both imagining and creating. Making something, producing something where there didn't used to be anything. Now think about how mind-blowing that really is. The Holy Spirit is creative by imagination and by action. God imagined the mountains into being. 
Before there were mountains, there was a surface of the deep, and it was God who dreamed the concept of a mountain into existence and spoke it into being. God imagined the concept of the very light by which we see the mountains, not just the sun, but light itself. Brilliant light made up of electromagnetic waves, a small portion of which we can see, a portion of which we can use to cook with, all of which can be used to broadcast sound and images through space and moves at the speed of just under 300 million meters per second. The Holy Spirit works creatively. Not only is God's imagination bigger than ours, the Holy Spirit is actually involved in creating what God conceives of and dreams into being. So not only did God imagine it, God created it too. The Holy Spirit was involved at creation. This isn't the only time that the Holy Spirit is linked to creativity, by the way. The first time that God says he's filled someone with the Spirit of God, that happens in Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 5. God is talking about the construction of the movable tent that the Israelites will spend centuries worshiping God in. And he says this to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold and silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. The first person filled with the Spirit of God worked with architecture, design, administration, overseeing teams of workers and resources. He worked with art, with metalwork, and so much more. The Spirit of God was present and active at creation. And the first person explicitly filled with the Spirit of God was filled with the Spirit of God to do creative work. That means that not only is God creative, not only are we made in the image of God who is creative, yes, this includes all of you who don't think you're very creative at all, it also means that the Spirit of God can help us when we need creativity. All right, in a few seconds, we're going to have a discussion, but creativity is about so much more than the arts. Creativity means creating. It could be making or finding a solution to a problem. It could mean creating something for the sake of fun, enjoyment, or delight. It can mean art. It can mean business. It can mean contracts. It can mean cooking. So discussion question number four. In your life, what are some ways that you have been creative or needed creativity? Bonus points if you can say how God helped you with that. Everybody needs creativity. If you're at work, you've probably needed creativity to solve problems or find new opportunities. If you're at home, you've probably needed creativity to work out scheduling conflicts, the budget, to solve interpersonal conflicts, also known as creative family discussions or as fights. Creativity shows up in conversation. What will you say next? It shows up in compassion as you listen to people talk about hard things. You're listening, praying, and thinking, what doesn't need to be said here? What does need to be said and how should I say it? All of that is creative. And since the Holy Spirit was and is involved in every area of creation, that means that the Holy Spirit can help in every area of life. So when you're looking at a spreadsheet in Excel and you're trying to make sense of it or make it all work together, you can ask the Holy Spirit for help. When you're looking at dinner or at finances or if you're looking at your kid's report card or if you're having a scheduling issue, if you need some creative help, the Holy Spirit is creative and helps from the smallest issue all the way to the largest. When we look at a situation, we can't see a way out. When we look at our finances, our family, our friends, our work, when all we see is an absence of options, the Holy Spirit is first introduced in the Bible in the process of creating options and entities that didn't exist before. I'm so glad that God is creative in imagination and in action. I'm so thankful for the help of the Holy Spirit in dreaming things into existence, in helping me through difficult situations and circumstances. Now, there's a connection here with something that we haven't mentioned yet. Another name for the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Wisdom. And you can see how these two work together so brilliantly. When you're stuck, you need creativity and wisdom. Creating more problems is not helpful. 
Creating more problems isn't really creative, it's, it's more destructive. Let me give you an example. My brother, Travis, wildly smart, creative, spontaneous. So when a thought would pop into his head, he'd usually do some really quick math and, and, and usually he figured it was worth whatever possible punishment he might get. And so this was a long time ago. My, my parents were uh, are a little old school and this was before spanking was discouraged. <clears throat> Anyway, so when he got in trouble, my mom would sometimes use a wooden spoon across the palm of Travis's hand as the punishment. Well, one day, he got tired of getting the wooden spoon across his palm, and so he went and broke every single wooden spoon in my mom's kitchen. There wasn't one left that was bigger than this. From then on out, my mom had to stir the spaghetti sauce with a third of the wooden spoon. Is it creative? I mean... Yeah, but it's also destructive. It created more problems too. Years later, when it was our turn to cook the meals throughout the week, Travis and I occasionally would reach into the wooden spoon drawer and pull out one of those short little wooden spoons. My mom might still have one of those broken spoons in her kitchen to this day. Creative, but it creates more problems. What we need in our lives is creative solutions that don't make more problems and don't make problems worse. We need God's wisdom and God's creativity working together in our lives. In James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. That word, without finding fault, can also be translated as without reproach or without blaming you for how you got into a spot where you need wisdom in the first place, and it will be given to you. When we need wisdom, we need the Holy Spirit. When we need creativity, we need the Holy Spirit. When we're looking at a situation where everything is chaos and we don't know how anything good can come of it, we need the Holy Spirit. When we're looking to build something good for the future, we need the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of wisdom, was involved in creation, and is God's hand at work in the world. Now there's one other thing that I think is really important. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And that God-breathed bit is really important here. One of the words used to talk about the Holy Spirit is ruach. It means wind or breath. See, the Holy Spirit is not only biblical in the sense that the Bible talks about Him, the Holy Spirit is also biblical in the sense that He was involved in every part of every book and verse that was written that makes up the Bible. The Holy Spirit is biblical. We have one more discussion question for you. I hope that this isn't just a Bible study, that this isn't just information, but the great thing about groups is they're a great opportunity to laugh, talk, share stories, develop friendships, and care for each other. So this question is designed with exactly that in mind. Is there any situation going on in your life right now where you need creativity and wisdom? But don't just let this moment pass by. Take a few minutes and pray asking God to give the other person the spirit of wisdom and creativity, that the Holy Spirit will create a way out of the chaos and the nothingness into and towards creative solutions towards life and goodness, and that they will know the peace, presence, and goodness of God. Discuss.